The one-two punch we're going to break down in today's video have a combined six championship rings to their names, being the driving factors behind those NBA titles. They've been teammates in every season of their 10 plus year careers. The duo features the greatest shooter of all time, next to one of the greatest defenders of all time, as Stephen Curry and Draymond Green are a near impossibility to beat four times out of seven in a playoff series, especially considering they have a much improved supporting cast around them in 2022, with the luxury of having Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins. After Gary Payton II was taken out on a cheap shot for the next four to five weeks, I see Jonathan Kaminga and Otto Porter Jr. filling in for GP2 just fine. But despite the lack of Warrior depth one through 10, the playoffs have consistently rewarded teams with the two top players on both ends of the floor in any given series. Steph and Dre have the potential to be just that against anyone they face, so this video shows you what makes Curry and Green seemingly impossible to beat in the postseason. Right before that, just 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. As the great Ray Lewis once said, defense wins championships, and Draymond Green has every defensive skill in the book. Green's constantly making fluid, well-timed rotations, messing up the passing lanes, and has the ability to play both the pick-and-roll ball handler and roller at the same time. Outstanding in drop coverage, Green stunts and hedges perfectly, and gives other defenders time to recover, using his body position to give himself an advantage. When Nikola Jokic was guarded by Draymond through the first few games of round one, the Joker was shooting 9 for 28 from the field, just 32% going 0 of 8 from 3 point range, tallying 3 assists and 3 turnovers, Draymond also only had 1 shooting foul against him. While one of this game's all-time great defenders has the reputation for being overly aggressive, with some labeling him as dirty, here's what Draymond had to say after his game to ejection. I'm never going to change the way I play basketball. It's gotten me this far, gotten me 3 championships, 4 all-stars, defensive player of the year, I'm not going to change now. Steve Kerr and Steph Curry caution that while they don't want to see Green change the way he plays from here on out, he must play with certain mindfulness to avoid picking up two more flagrant points that would result in a suspension. Curry said, quote, Unfortunately, yeah, he has to be mindful of that. Only he can tell you what that means for him and how he approaches each game. I want him to be himself and make the plays he's capable of making and impact the game. Be demonstrative, be the Draymond we expect, but he can't be in a situation where the interpretation of rules goes against him. But Green didn't show too much remorse, saying it will absolutely not take the bite out of the way I play, because then we go home early, and the flagrant points don't matter anymore. I don't know how to take the bite out. That doesn't work for me." End quote. Skipping ahead to the next time out in Game 2, and Draymond was bleeding after getting recklessly elbowed in the face by Xavier Tillman, and DeLon Brooks then clubbed Gary Payton in a reckless play, ultimately fracturing Gary's wrist as he braced the fall. First and foremost, prayers to GP2 on a speedy recovery. That looked damn painful, but the problem with that quote-unquote revenge from Memphis is that Draymond's hard foul and ridiculous ejection on Brandon Clark wasn't close to what happened with Gary Payton and Elon Brooks. Maybe you didn't see this, but Draymond actually braced Clark's fall, and if he didn't do that, Brandon would have been in the hospital. Green's foul was unnecessary, I'm not denying that, but it only deserved a flagrant one. As Green said himself, his reputation got him ejected. Brooks bolting back at full speed on the fast break, and using his arm like a baseball bat, as if he's Negan from Walking Dead to swing at Gary's head and end his season, doesn't come close to what Draymond did in Game 2, or what Green's ever done throughout his career. You can joke about his eye poking and inadvertent kicks to the groin, but he's never had a moment where he could have ended another player's career. When someone's above the rim, you really should never mess with them, especially when you're coming back from the fast break. Dylan's a fellow Torontonian and a talented player, but today I had to use him as an example for what should never happen in the game of basketball. Considering what Gary Payton II does in the community as well, and how he made this roster as a 15th man, I can't blame Warrior fans for making Brooks public enemy number one. Having said that, if you're going to the game in Game 3, please keep it classy. 
Moving on to Stephen Curry, who displayed how underrated his defense was at the end of Game 1 against Memphis. With under 30 seconds left and a chance for John Morant to walk it off, the footwork and balance from Steph to swiftly backpedal in four shuffles over to the weak side allows him to stuff Morant in a highlight game-winning block that was replayed all over social media. Players are shooting 20 for 55, which is 36% when guarded by Steph in these playoffs. Only one guard has defended more shots at a lower defensive field goal percentage, which is Drew Holiday. Jaw Dropper got his revenge in Game 2, dropping a 47-piece in a W, but he had some words for the two-time MVP and three-time champion post-game when they crossed each other at half-court, which may not have been the greatest idea. Of course, Ja represents the next wave of dominant point guards, but playoff Steph is a different animal who Morant may want to think twice about poking. He may be 34 years old, but in 2022's playoffs, Curry's 27 point and 6 assist averages on 47% shooting from the field and nearly 40% from beyond the arc while attempting 10 of those 3 pointers per game, combined with how he's moving defensively, that should tell you the two-time scoring champion isn't even close to being washed up. Mostly coming off the bench after returning from a sprained left foot, Steph scored 30 plus points in 3 out of 5 games in round 1 against the Denver Nuggets. Given the dubs are in the midst of a heated battle with Jaws Grizzlies, you can't forget Curry only has 7 games under his belt since being out for around a month. That lack of rhythm is even more of a reason why Morant, motivating debatably the best player in the league by getting up in his grill, could have been detrimental for Memphis. The Grizz have historically been a great matchup for Steph, as entering this series against Morant, he was averaging 39 points, 7.2 boards, 10 dimes, and 2 steals per game on 49% shooting from the field and 40% shooting from 3 point range. Curry didn't just become the greatest shooter ever because he's got the smoothest release and highest arc on his jumper, but in addition to that endlessly worked on skill, Steph built up his legacy by using little things to motivate him. Whether it was getting picked behind four different guards in 2009's NBA draft, being called too small in his early years, or people claiming jump shooting teams could never win the championship, then there's the people who say Kevin Durant was the more important player in 2017 and 2018's championships. I'd respond to that with two simple facts. Firstly, Steph has the highest plus minus of any NBA player by far since 2013. And secondly, from 2016 through 2019, Steph's record without Durant was 27 and four, while Durant's record without Steph was much worse at 23 and 17. That says a lot to me. Are Steph and Draymond the NBA's most skilled two-way duo? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, I think the Suns are the clear favorites. Pause to read the rest of his tremendous take. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. Deep Flow signing off.